G'day folks and uh, welcome back to the shop. I uh, thought I'd give you a little quick update today of what I've been up to and uh, I've been a bit slack and the reason I've been slack is because I'm really, really busy at work for, I think most of you know that um, what I do for a job, I'm actually a high school teacher so uh, first term's always hectic, you know, trying to get marks in before Easter and that sort of thing. So on a positive note, at Easter time I flew up to the Gold Coast to visit my family, my mother and brother and sister who live up there. And while I was up there, I had an opportunity to pop in and see Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. And uh, uh, I'd spoken to Curtis and Karen before via, you know, SMSs and messages and that sort of stuff across social media. But it was really good. I popped into his, Curtis's workshop and uh, very nice. They're very generous people, Karen and Curtis, and they gave me a bit of free swag and uh, a nice hat there as well. And uh, I'll flick a photo up here and I'll include a little bit of uh, footage in the outtakes as well for you. Got another letter in the mail all the way from the USA, um, and that's from Tom. Tom over at um, Hilltop Machine Works, and uh, Tom sent me a, a sticker and a business card. So thank you very much, Tom, and I'll put that up on the board while I'm talking to you now. Tom's got a really great shop over there. Um, I can't remember where it is now. Sorry, Tom. But yeah, it looks a very, very nice place to be. Um, all righty, what else is happening? Uh, thanks to Live Tools. Live Tools sent me this little iPhone gadget here. So what it is, it's a LED uh, selfie and with branded Live Tools. And what I'll do, I'll do that in a giveaway. I'm trying to wait for this channel to hit a thousand subscribers. I've got a few things to give away on this channel. So if you could help uh, support me and click that subscribe button or even share these videos and encourage others to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it, thank you. Um, as you guys probably know, I run two YouTube channels. I've got another YouTube channel called DCT. It used to be DCT Teacher, then I changed it to, uh, to what DCT meant, which is Design, Creativity and Technology Channel. Um, now, it's, much, it's a bigger channel than this one, but to be honest with you, I'm really enjoying the Aaron Engineering Channel a little bit more, so that's why I've, I've been trying to put a little bit more focus into this channel. And I think it best suits what I do these days. Alrighty, um, so yeah, Live Tools, I'll give that away uh, when I hit a thousand subscribers, so thank you Live Tools. Um, the little motor, so where am I up to with that? I finally got the head bolted on. I'm currently working on a mandrel that will fit the timing chain, and then I've got to machine out this flywheel, which will go on here to put it on, all right? So I'm still a fair way away in that. I've been a bit slack, like I said, I've just been busy with other things. Uh, yesterday I popped out to my old uh, school where I used to work um, and saw Peter Michelini. Peter's a um, very, very good welder. He's a ticketed welder. He's welded Navy frigates and all that sort of stuff. Peter um, is the engineering teacher out there, so he very graciously gave me some offcuts. So thank you, Peter. What I'll do, I'll jump up and show you now. And it's really good. So there's some steel and, and brass in there and bronze. So we've got seven eighths of an inch hex. Uh, one and one inch, one and eighth of an inch brass or, or bronze, three quarters of an inch hex steel. We've got uh, 1.2 hex steel. Got some other stuff, so three quarters of an inch by inch and a half, inch by inch and a half, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter, and this big sucker here, two inches by two inches. Now, I'm just not sure. I think this is steel. I don't know, I don't know if it's cast, I'm unsure about that, so I need to check that, maybe hit it with a grinder and find out. So some other stuff Peter graciously gave me was um, some old hand files that he found underneath the steel rack, well they're brand new actually, uh, an old Allen key set. This was all gonna be demolished with the building guys, it's a criminal, you know, it's, it's bloody criminal what they do. And also a really old Mitotoyo micrometer. So it's, it is metric. So yeah, who knows? I might even give that away when I reach a thousand subscribers. So something else he found is uh, this old Mitotoyo DTI, so dial test indicator, and I'll put that to good use. And it came with this broken magnetic stand and the backing had broken out of these Bakelite or plastic, whatever it is. I'll probably 3D print that and put it back in here. That way then I can put the magnet back in and then make it work again. So hopefully I can get that going. So here's a little job I've got brought to my shop today and it's a mate of mine and it's a, I believe it's an electronic distributor um, out of a small block Chev motor that he's put in his two door hold Monaro. Now, 
I think it was a 400 cubic inch block which he's had bored and stroked and I can't remember the size now in cubic inches but it could be about I think it's around 440 but look don't quote me on that um, if I can remember I'll flick it up on the screen here in a minute so what he's done apparently with the with this coil uh, sorry with this distributor it, it doesn't go down far enough so what uh, Rusty would like me to do is to machine off that boss that's come on this distributor and if I flick it around here to show you so currently it's obviously it's all CNC machined um, this is an inch and a quarter and this ring here this boss is inch and three quarters so I've got to take half an inch off the diameter okay so a quarter inch on the radius now once that gets machined off uh, Rusty will put on this uh, collet uh, to the right depth now the problem he was having is because this distributor wouldn't go in further enough or far enough I believe the drive that drives the oil pump so there's an oil pump shaft attached to this which goes down to the oil pump um, and it had disengaged and I believe it caused him some grief I think he blew a motor up because of it um, but don't quote me on that so what I've done I've put the four jaw chuck on and I need this four jaw chuck on because I also need to machine that flywheel I showed you earlier on my um, air compressed it to uh, four stroke motor conversion. So I've clocked it in and I've got it pretty close. Let's have a look at it. I'll bring the DTI in now and just bring it up gently to zero. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. I might just zoom in a little bit for you. And now if I just gently pull that around. All right, it's, it's pretty close. Okay, so it's within a, you know, five thousandths of a mil. So I'm not too worried about that. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll get this off now. Um, I'll start the three-phase power converter up. I thought this might interest some of you before I get started. Um, I've got this app installed on my phone and I've got a device attached to my smart meter, which is my electricity meter. And you can actually see that my house is currently pulling three, four kilowatts. Now I've got the air compressor running. I've got the three-phase power running and you can see the air compressor just cut out and you can just see how much uh, cheaper that power's become you know, when the air, air compressor got a full tank of air. So currently with my three phase um, inverter running, you can see how much current I'm drawing. I'll start the old Colchester up. Let's just have a look at that change. So there's the motor of the Colchester started. You can see it peaked when it actually, uh, when the motor, a hard start. All right, let's just um, make sure nothing's going to hit here. Start the lathe up. And back to 770. And once the lathe started, I'm, I'm using about three kilowatts of power. So it's about $1.22 per hour, all right? I thought that might interest some of you to actually see how much electricity actually costs here. Uh, mind you, today is Wednesday and it's, uh, it's currently, you know, quarter to 10 in the morning, 9.46. So yeah, it's probably power's a little bit expensive this time of day, but I thought you guys might appreciate so, that. Let's get started on this and I'll zoom you in on the job and hopefully I don't stuff it up on camera. Now what's going on here? I've had Rusty tape up this cord. It was too hard to pull out. He would have had to remove the pins. I used to use a good old fashioned black gaffer, gaffer tape, which is the roadie's friend, as you know. Have you ever been on a, on a band with a band or anything like that? All right. So what I'm gonna just do here is just gently work this off. I don't wanna go too savage in it because I haven't, I haven't really swung off, off the chuck. And what I'll do here, I'll just work forward and back. And Pull out. And then I've got half night. This is my air closer. I've got to dive down this. That's it. 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 Now I still can feel a ridge in there. Now I don't know if that was caused by, it was caused by the radius of the tool on the CNC machine, where there's a little bit of undercut. So let's just back this off and just see what I've got here. So you can see we're just under an inch and a quarter. 
on the actual shaft when it was machined by the CNC machine and mine now. So I'm just a little bit proud, okay? So let's just take another light cut on there. Let's check that now. One point two four seven. It's identical now to the other size. Although well, I can still feel a bit of a ridge there for some reason. No. Nah. As the old saying go, let's leave well enough alone. I might just move the cutting tool out of the way and just gently give that a little bit of a linish without taking too much off. I'll come over the top here. Just be careful I don't get hit with that. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. We've got a little bit of a... As you get older, guys, I tell you, you can't see stuff. And there it is there. So that's what I was feeling. I was feeling that little dag left on there. I'm quite happy with that now. I'll give that a little bit of a tickle. And there we have it. So, not bad. I've sort of smoothed it all out. Um, that little mark there is from me setting up the cutting tool originally. Um, I brought it in gently and set my dial. Uh, as you know, my old Colchester is an imperial lathe, um, and I hate working in imperial. I'm sorry, guys. I bloody hate it. Well, I'm quite happy with the way that that turned out. Um, the collar slides on beautifully, okay, and it's the same size. It's consistent. So I've got that uh, cap head, socket cap head screw here just tickled up a little bit and uh, it's just sliding on beautifully mate like uh, like a finger in a backside so I'm really happy with that now before you go um, just want to say thank you very much I really appreciate uh, everyone supporting me on Aaron engineering and uh, by watching my videos by interacting with me and commenting and uh, thank you I, I really enjoyed this channel and uh, I just love doing you know mucking around having a play in my home shop to me, it's, uh, it's the best stress relief ever, you know. It, um, you lock, I lock myself away in here and, you know, the world doesn't bother me. Now, stay with me. Check out the outtakes. I've, uh, I've brought in my good old buddy, Peter Pilbeam. Uh, Pete's a great bloke, uh, wealth of knowledge and a very good tradesman. And uh, he's got a little joke for you. He talks about uh, a gentleman he used to know by the... He calls him Old Stanley. And he's got numerous of these stories, and I'm going to try and capture them on film. Um, the old fella's not getting any younger, and uh, you know, God forbid something should happen to him before I can get these stories out. And uh, old Pete, he's been he's been a bit of a mentor to to me and young Peter, the uh, fabricator, you know, the uh, qualified baller maker who took over from me at the other school. And uh, he's he's a wealth of knowledge, and he's a bloody old gun. So yeah, hang about for that, and I think you'll find it uh, funny. And I've included a little bit of footage of uh, when I went and visited uh, Karen and Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering and uh, Karen uh, filmed it for me and she was giggling and shaking the camera while I was talking. Alrighty, thanks guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Have a lovely day. Old Stanley was an old bushman that used to go around the countryside uh, repairing windmills and installing them. And he was working in Queensland and the, the windmills were right out on the, the back of the station, which was a, a, a fairly long drive into the homestead. So he, him and his dog went out there and he was allowed to shoot one sheep a week to feed himself. So he's out there and he's got a four gallon drum and he fills it with veggies and cuts up the sheep and 
cooks it up and then every time him and his dog want something to eat they have a bowl of stew. And he's out there for nearly six months and he's getting absolutely fed up with being out on his own and eating stew and all the rest of it. So he decided he'd have a weekend off. He drove to the homestead and told the bloke that he was going for a few days away and they said, no, we've been expecting you for some time now. So he said, I got on the bus and I got into Brisbane at 5 p.m. In, on Friday night. And he said, opposite the bus station was a transport cafe. And he said, being five o'clock Friday night, it was very, very busy. He said, I walked in the door with me dog and the waitress came up and she said, how many, sir? He said, just me and the dog. And she said, I've got one seat left. So he said, I sit down and she gives me the menu and she says, I'm in a hell of a hurry, as you can see, we're really busy. And he said, I opened it up and, she, and it said, Irish stew. And she went, right, sir, one. So she took off. And he's sitting there going, bloody Irish stew, what am I going to do with that? Anyway, she brought it back and planted it down and he waited until she went away and he slipped it under the table to the dog. And uh, he went through the menu and she come back a few minutes later and he says, look, he says, can I order a steak and chips and couple of eggs on top he says I'm really hungry and she said well you've polished off the stew all right and he said no I gave it to the dog and she looked under the table and said well sir it looks like he really enjoyed it and he said no no he didn't like it one little bit and she looked at him a bit strange and she said how do you know that sir and he said well have a look at him he's licking his ass to take the taste out of his mouth <laughs> that's just one of many <laughs> Check this out, I'm up here in Queensland and I popped in to see Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. If you haven't seen his channel, go and check it out, it does some really big stuff. Unlike me, you know, I'm a Humpty Dumpty machinist, Curtis is actually a real machinist. And if you can see, we're polar opposites. He lives in the north, I live in the south. He has a big dog over a small dog. He's a skinny bastard, I'm a fat bastard. Catch you later.